There is simply no other major business like the Tata Group, a company whose bottom line is doing the right thing for society. How did Tata transform itself from a family-owned business to one of the most professionally managed enterprises in the world? How did it become a world leader in an array of unrelated businesses? From steel and automobile manufacturing to hotels and IT consulting, what exactly is the Tata way, which has earned it so much admiration and respect? The brief history of the Tatas charts the contribution of every Tata chairman, from Jamshedji Tata, who set up the company in 1868, to Ratan Tata and Cyrus Mistri, and explores the values at the heart of the Tata group, as well as the role played in its development by the philanthropic trusts that owns two-thirds of the company. For anyone curious about this Indian company that has become a leading global player, this book is the perfect introduction. The Greatest Company in the World, The Story of Tata by Peter Cassidy. Preface We are now living in a world where the richest 85 people own more than what 3.5 billion of the poorest own. This is a world where in 2013, the largest bank on the planet paid $23 billion in fines without admitting to any wrongdoing. The Financial Times reported that in 2013, the major banks in the United States paid over $100 billion in fines. We are living in a world where currently 99% of the wealth is owned by less than 1% of the people and if all the wealth in the world was divided into all the people in the world, everyone would be a millionaire. I am an unapologetic capitalist, but I have now realized that there is a different way for capitalism to succeed, the Tata way. Traditionally, companies are set up to make money for their shareholders, not to benefit the communities in which they exist and do business. Delivering returning on investment is a necessity if you want to keep your job as a CEO of a publicly traded business. Serving the collective good, well, that's something for idealized socialist theory. There has to be a better way, a new and better reality. There is and this is the story about a truly unique company which was established to create value for shareholders, employees, customers and humankind itself. There simply is no other major business owner like the Tata Group, a company whose bottom line every time is doing the right thing for society. This company has not merely reformulated many of the business principles we have been taught for generations, it has turned them upside down. Ask people who their heroes are, and you will hear a lot of the same names. Madhu Teresa, Martin Luther King Jr., Abraham Lincoln and Mahatma Gandhi will be popular choices. They were all phenomenal people, leaders truly. But my own list is a little different. My top three heroes People who actually and positively changed the world we live in are Leandro Da Vinci, Michelangelo Bunarotti, and Jamshedji Tata. The first two you have no doubt heard of. Leandro Da Vinci was of course one of the most creative geniuses the world has ever known. Michelangelo was widely regarded as the most talented and accomplished painter of his time, even earning the nickname The Divine One. Like Leandro, Michelangelo changed the way we experience reality itself. In my eyes, Jamshedji Tata, the founder of the Indian company that was to later become Tata Sons, is on a level with these undoubted luminaries, with a legacy that continues to change people's lives on a daily basis. Few people outside of India at least know the name Jamshedji Tata. I certainly had never heard of him before 1999, when Gabriel Roseman announced to me that he was stepping down as Director of Global Strategic Ventures and Acquisitions for accounting giant Ernest & Young. As ENY had long been a client of my executive recruiting firm, Cladark Resources, I was curious as to where he was going. Tata, he answered. The name barely rang a bell, but Gabriel enlightened me and over the years called on myself and Cladag Resources to recruit top leaders for the India-based firm in France, Germany, Italy, Ireland, Netherlands, England, Canada and the United States. I was therefore in a position to get to know Tata Sons. There are more than 130 independently operating companies in the group in a way few Westerners ever do. What I learned amazed me. I decided to write this book initially to help my recruiters and executive search consultants have a better understanding of Tata Consultancy Services, who over 14 years had become our biggest client. It was supposed to just be a short 15-page summary, but the more I started studying TCS and Tata, the more captivated I got and the project developed a life of its own. Now, there are amazing companies and amazing stories, but no amazing companies with amazing stories to match Tata's. Today, Tata Group employs nearly half a million people and earns revenues of $100 billion. It reported a profit of $6.23 billion in 2011 to 2012 and controls assets valued at $77.7 billion. Tata Sons was founded in 1868 by Jamshedji Tata, the son of the first businessman in what was otherwise a family of Sorostorian 
Parsi priests. In 1869, Jamshedji converted a bankrupt oil mill for the production of cotton. It was a humble start, but Jamshedji Tata had grand visions, visions of what India with his hard work could become, visions worthy of the likes of Leandro and Michelangelo. Jamshedji knew and loved his religion, and he embraced its most central tenet, that the mission of the righteous person, the person who had hopes of heaven, was not merely to live a good life, but to make life better for others. He believed he could build a company that would spark positive change. While other successful capitalists and captains of industry started companies to create profit and thereby wealth, Jamshedji Tata planted the seeds of a philanthropic trust, which now won 66% of the Tata group. In harmony with his religion, Tata's company would exist ultimately to finance and initiate projects to improve the lives of the people of India. So, Jamshedji Tata became not only a catalyst for sweeping change in his vast homeland, but in the process conceptualized an entirely new way of doing business as well as philanthropy. What he began has changed the lives of billions as the company he founded continues to work for the betterment of society. In the words of Jamshedji, we think we started on sound and straightforward business principles, considering the interests of the shareholders abroad and the health and welfare of the employees the sure foundation of our success. This book will introduce you to my hero and to the legacy that is his creation. My hope for the book is that it will encourage companies and governments, encourage you to emulate and implement the Tata model. I know the world would be a better place if that were to happen. Tata by the numbers. Two thirds of Tata is owned by philanthropic trusts. Tata is one of the biggest charities in the world. Tata consists of more than 130 companies, of which 32 are traded on stock exchanges. Two of the top 20 companies in India in terms of market capitalization. TCS and Tata Models are members of the Tata Group. Ted Lee, a Tata company, is the second largest tea producer in the world. The largest company in India, as measured by market capitalization, TCS is the largest member of the group. Tata is the biggest industrial sector employer in the United Kingdom. This is a huge achievement for a company from a former colony of the ruler. Tata revenues exceeds $100 billion. Tata Steel is the fifth largest steel company in the world. Tata Power is India's largest private sector power provider and 13% of their electricity is generated by clean sources such as hydro, solar and wind. This economic powerhouse is two-thirds owned by philanthropic trust. It is, in effect, a profitable charity. However, there is no need to argue theories of capitalism and altruism. A glance at the group's P&L reveals that Tata is highly successful and has been for some 140 years. So, how does a highly diversified conglomerate become a charity or vice versa? How does a philanthropic for-profit satisfy its shareholders? While many of its companies are publicly traded, the Tata Group has evolved from being a family-owned business to becoming one of the best-run professionally managed groups in the world. The philanthropic trust control a majority of the Tata holding company, Tata Sons. The Tata family is a very small shareholder, yet the owners are only one of four stakeholders Tata sets out to serve. In addition to the owners, which include shareholders, are employees, customers and society itself. Society is what the company's leaders call the fourth stakeholder, and it looms large, maybe the largest among all four. Society dropped Jamshedji Tata when he built his first company more than a century ago. He did not use so abstract or neutral a term, however, but undertook his enterprise with the active mission of using it simply to make people's lives better. Even in our cynical age, we cannot fail to recognize such nobility of purpose and principle. But if we are tempted to ascribe such nobility to a bygone era, the fact is that Tata Sons unvaryingly adheres to the principle on which it was founded. Even through financial crisis, it has not wavered. The spectacle of an enterprise as highly moral as it is profitable is rare in a society which has grown accustomed to thinking of business success as a zero-sum game in which my triumph requires your defeat. Success that follows a zero-sum formula is incompatible with a fourth stakeholder. But Jamshedji Tata and those who followed him never used that formula. They reformulated the criteria of business success and made humanity, philanthropy, and ethics not adjuncts to profit but its very core. And so whether measured in dollars, rupees, euros, or service to humankind, Tata has certainly become a role model of success. Tata companies continually aspire to better ethics, just as they are committed to better business practices. The two are not only quite compatible, they are essentially to one another. The company has not merely reformulated many of the business principles we have been taught for generations. 
It has turned them upside down. Most significantly, data management long ago rejected the dictum that a shoemaker should stick to his last instead of specializing. Data has ventured into an array of unrelated industries and has become a world leader in several from steel and chemical to IT consulting, hotels, aviation, energy, education, automobile, manufacturing and insurance. These are just a few of the Tata arms. In fact, it is easier to think of an industry that Tata is not involved in than to list those they are. A diversified global enterprise, philanthropic at its core, the company shares profit with employees, shareholders and the societies in which they live and work. The most senior Tata managers don't live in multiple sprawling mansions as so many American and European CEOs do, but in modest apartments and homes. The guiding principle for everyone at Tata is sharing the wealth. With Tata reporting annual profits in 2012 of $6.23 billion, this means that a very large amount of money is invested back into the economy every year just from this one source.